She and Jackie Young ready for the tip. Winner gets the national championship. We will see Notre Dame sit in this zone a lot, and they're going to have to contest shooters. And they will look to bring a couple players to McCowan if they can on the catch. And we will see Mississippi State playing in the deny man to man. McCowan has her first rebound. These two teams, each of the last two years, defeated Connecticut to get to the national championship game. Teams that have done that have not fared well in the title game. However, Notre Dame's lone championship in 2001 came against Purdue after they had defeated UConn in the semifinals. Jessica Shepard breaks the scoring seal in the title game. And that's going to be have to have to be where Jessica Shepard looks for her shots. Burying 6-7 Tierra McCowan under the basket is not going to be there as much tonight. I was so impressed with Notre Dame's semifinal win over Connecticut and how they found shooters, how they moved in concert with one another on the defensive end. Mabry finds Young on the break. It takes a great deal of awareness and understanding of the scout. Who are the shooters? How quick do they get into their shooting motion? What is your length that you can use to track them down and not give them a clean look from beyond the arc? McCowan got a deep catch that time. Ogumba Wale slicing inside. Blair Schaefer, good defense again by Jessica Shepard. Already has been involved in a couple of turnovers. And here she is. Ended up trying to dish it off to Catherine Westbell. If there's a player almost a foot shorter than me between me and the basket, I don't think that's a pass, B. I think Shepard's got to go up and he's got to go up with, that, with great aggression to finish that play. But when you're going against 6-7, or you know 6-7's on the floor, that's also in your head. McCowan with the traveling violation. The AP and ESPNW National Coach of the Year, Muffet McGraw, seeking her 800th win as the head coach of the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. It would give her and the program its second national championship. Kara, how about going against this zone? A Mississippi State team that only averages 10 turnovers a game already has three. Ogumba Wale makes it 6 nothing. So there's the size differential. You're going to see a lot of post-ups from Tiara McCowan for Mississippi State on the offensive end, but the Irish have the size advantage on the perimeter. Nice job by Ogumba Wale to utilize her size and strength advantage, post up and get the bucket. Victoria Vivians, the All-American. What an impact she made when she came back in the semifinals despite dealing with four fouls. Part of the big rally against Louisville. Mabry draws a foul. On Saturday, Vic Schaefer was named the Naismith Coach of the Year. Earlier in the year, named the SEC Coach of the Year. An incredible job he's done rebuilding this Mississippi State program. One of the things to keep an eye on tonight is this right here. Free throws made and free throws attempted. Notre Dame did this so well in the semifinal game against Connecticut, got to the line 23 times. Mississippi State got to the line 25 times. Both teams can be very aggressive off the dribble and draw fouls. Notre Dame with a roster that can't absorb high counts of foul trouble. So the Irish have to be very careful, particularly here in the, here in the first quarter. Another turnover. Yeah. And a foul called on Morgan William, the senior. Part of the rebuild of Mississippi State women's basketball has been the attendance skyrocketing. 
The support is back. They're live at the hump in Starkville tonight. I heard some of those cowbells. <laughs> we see you at the hump. <laughs> Jordan Danbury off the bench coming in for Roe Johnson. Ties up Jessica Shepard. I think Jordan Danbury is a critical piece to Mississippi State. And this is a player that came in and gave them such a jolt defensively, defending Asia Durr. Now she draws the assignment of Agumba Wale. She's going to have to give Vic Schaefer some good minutes tonight on the defensive end. Westbell got too far underneath. Here is the speedy Danbury. Right on cue to get the Bulldogs a second bucket. What Notre Dame offensively needs to understand is that unless Tierra McCowan has had to come out to the perimeter to defend, they're not going to get a lot of shots inside the restricted area. Offensive foul on Jackie Young, drawn by Vivians. This is excellent weak side awareness by Victoria Vivians, getting to the spot outside of the circle and drawing the charge on Jackie Young. That's something Notre Dame's guards are going to have to be aware of. Mississippi State as a team does a good job of setting you up for those. Danbury a little too strong. Out of bounds. It'll be Notre Dame ball. We'll see if those defensive plays help settle Mississippi State. Not sure if it was nerves or just the anxiousness of playing to start the game, but they certainly haven't looked like themselves on the offensive end. That's one of the things that impressed, impressed me in the semifinal game from Notre Dame is they looked as calm as any of the four teams right. at the start of that one. Here's Ogumbawale. Pierre McCowan with the rebound. William. Vivian's got some space. And Westbeld with the board. Job in transition D by Mississippi State. Vivians with the rebound. The five foot three Morgan William running the point for Mississippi State. Mabry knocked the entry feed away. Ogumawale. Westbell, the Ohio native. Notre Dame defensively has such active hands in their zone and they get deflections and they get tips and in this game they're getting steals. Mississippi State, an excellent ball handling team. Five giveaways already. McCowan missed it. It'll stay at this end of the floor. A timeout in the national championship game. They call her the closer on this team. So we did have some behind the scenes footage of when Arike found out that Kobe had tweeted at her. Oh my God. <laughs> I can't breathe. That I moment breathe. when Kobe tweets you is pretty special. <laughs> I know you see the name. Well, among the four of us, only one of us can talk about being with Kobe Bryant in a tweet as Shepard scores for Notre Dame. That's you, Holly Rowe. Only you get that type of love from the Mamba. That's how I react every time you tweet me. At <laughs> Literally the only person, I think, that reacts as such. Tierra McCowan on the board for Mississippi State. First thing Notre Dame did in practice this morning was work on simply inbounding the basketball from that end of the floor. They've done a nice job with it. Here comes Vivians. Roe Johnson back in the game for Mississippi State. Offensive rebound, McCowan. Mississippi State much more under control, and that's what make, makes Morgan Williams special, the ability to get into crevices, and the play is over. The second Tierra McCowan gets inside position, it does not matter what anyone in a Navy uniform does. She is going to get the rebound, and she is going to finish the shot. 
Army, Air Force, Marines. None of them could do anything about it either. No, they could bring the whole squadron. Not for Big T in the way she's been playing. And guys, Jessica Shepard picked up her first foul. We have to keep an eye on that if McCowan continues to impose her will inside. Christina Nelson, the grad student for Notre Dame, has checked in. Vic Schaefer upset about that foul against Roe Johnson. Well, th this is how Mississippi State likes to play. Physical on the perimeter, creating pressure, and, and so that foul, he's upset because he wants them to be able to force the action and create pace for Notre Dame. Well, Gumba Wale with a post up, looking for Shepard. Well, tomorrow night, Michigan and Villanova will square off in the NCAA Division I Men's Basketball National Championship. Coverage on TBS begins at 7 p.m. Eastern. For more information, go to NCAA.com. Morgan William gives Mississippi State its first lead. So what do we see? Her aggressiveness has changed Mississippi State offensively. Her ability to get into the paint. A foul on Danbury up the floor. Morgan William has the quickness and the smarts to get into the middle of this zone, to get into the guts of it. If you get into the guts of it, now someone has to help, and that makes it harder or easier for Tiara McCowan to make plays. And once Jackie Young got beaten, she had to step off. She understands her, the importance of her staying out of foul trouble. Vivian's another steal. Got it to go. A finisher, a senior for Mississippi State. Puts them up by three and forces Muffet McGraw's first time out. Well, Mississippi State has settled. And you see Muffet McGraw take that time out because she needs to settle down her team. The Bulldogs in the midst of a 9-0 run. Here's how they got here. The overtime win against Louisville. As Rebecca mentioned, free throws a huge factor and the offensive glass a huge factor. In the first five minutes of this game, Mississippi State had more turnovers than points. Five turnovers, four points. They had five turnovers in the entire first half in the semifinal game. They have settled down and they have, as you said, Kara, gotten, uh, gotten drives inside. They've gotten shots up so that Tierra McCowan can get to the offensive glass. Turnovers, such an important part of what Mississippi State does. See how the Irish got here. They also did very good work at the free throw line. The clutch factor from Arike Ogumbawale. Second chance for the dogs here. McCowan battling with Shepard, and a jump ball will keep it here with Mississippi State. Well, I love this big matchup. Jessica Shepard is undersized, but she is so tough. She grew up on a farm. She went chased and caught a goat at a rodeo. She's not messing around in there with Big T. I love that she's fearless <laughs> tying up a 6'7 player much bigger than she is. I love that 6'4 can be considered undersized in this game. <laughs> Tierra McCowan already with seven points, along with four rebounds. 11 straight for the dogs. I can promise you this, there is no goat as big as Tierra McCowan. <laughs> I don't care what farm you live on. This kid can play. Mabry with the step. William tripped up. It'll be Jackie Young with her second foul. Notre Dame does not have depth on their bench when it comes to the guard position. Now Jackie Young going out. They're going with one of their bigger lineups. Westbeld in. Shepard, Westbeld, and Nelson all playing together. 
It's not a lineup that Muffin McGraw uses very often. Danbury. Mabry. McCowan to the ground. Kept the dribble going momentarily and then gets tied up. Notre Dame has the possession arrow. That's a big play for the Irish. And Mabry, I thought she might have gotten fouled on that drive when Danbury tried to poke the ball away. But excellent job by them to get on the floor and cover that up. And you hold for one shot here if you're Notre Dame. I want to revisit 6-7 falling to the ground and having the presence of mind to dribble so she doesn't get the foul or the, the travel called. That was impressive. Wallet against Johnson. The two players have made the big shots Friday. Shepard tried to keep it alive. Vivians stripped by Mabry. Point three on the clock. They don't have time for a catch and shoot. It's got to be a tip here. They'll give it up there for McCowan. Unable to beat the buzzer. The basket does not count. It was the traction they gained on the defensive end of the floor. That gave them some get out and run opportunities in transition with numbers. Dan Berry. Rebounded by Westbell. Well, guys, Vic Schaefer really reminded his team that their ball pressure is the key to their defense. He, he drew a big black line back and forth, back and forth, across the middle of the floor, right where the logo is. He said, if we're picking them up down by the three-point line or at the foul line, they're going to kill us every time. We cannot stop that. So he reminded them what he talked about in shoot-around. you got to pick them up at half court and really make every single pass inside hard. Now, to Holly's point there, Marina Mabry has been handling a lot more point guard this year. With all the injuries that Notre Dame has dealt with this season, Mabry has had to take over that point guard role often. What is the biggest challenge that she faces going up against the pressure of Mississippi State? Well, it forces you to speed your mind up when you're going against pressure. And there's a lot of inputs as a point guard that you're trying to calculate in a quick fashion from your coach, from the other team's coach, from the defense that you're seeing, and from all that pressure that you're seeing. Marina Mabry is much better than she was when she first took over the position. But it's still a pressure point that teams feel like they can affect Notre Dame when they do this. They bring the full court pressure. And so that's what Vic Schaefer's trying to impress upon his team is get up like Jasmine Holmes is doing right now. Marina, maybe make every dribble, make every pass, make her think about you. Holmes has to check in because Morgan William just picked up her second foul. One of the beauties of being a post player, Carrie. You don't have as many inputs. You don't have to think as much. <laughs> See ball, get ball. Yeah, do, 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 do the thinking for me, point guard. <laughs> Mabry, tough step back. And then a foul called on Westbell. Thursday at 6 Eastern, the Frozen Four gets underway in St. Paul as Minnesota Duluth will take on Ohio State in the national semifinals on ESPN2 and the ESPN app. Visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. We're here in Columbus. The home of Ohio State, nationwide arena, the site. Nelson's got the rebound for Notre Dame. It's been excellent gang rebounding by Notre Dame, though, by and large here in the first half. Mabry lost it off of her foot. Looked a lot like when Jess Shepard lost it off her foot at the end of the Connecticut game. But those mistakes happen when you feel the pressure because you take your eye off of the ball, you take your eye off of what you're trying to see, which is the next play. And that's how Mississippi State is able to help control. That's three turnovers now for Marina Mabry.
Shot clock all the way down to six. McCowan. And I know Muffin McGraw didn't want to necessarily go to this bigger lineup, but it has done some good things on the defensive end. Bro Johnson, well short that time. Jackie Young, you saw her when she picked up her second foul, grimacing a little bit. Holly Rowe tells us that she is only sitting because of those two personal fouls, nothing health-wise that concerns Muffet McGraw right now. Well, this is another area where Notre Dame misses Jackie Young. That's yeah. bringing up the basketball. There's another turnover. Yeah, Shepard was bringing it up there. Johnson left it short. On cue, here comes Jackie Young. Really feels like Muffin McGraw senses what you two were just talking about. Young had a career high 32 points in the victory against UConn the other night. The all time leading scorer in Indiana State history. Schaefer hits a three. What an effort by McCowan on the deck to keep that ball alive. Big shot by Blair Schaefer. She was scoreless in the semifinal round. Important for her to be able to extend the defense, especially against the zone, to hit that three. Ogumbawale. Largest lead for Mississippi State. Vivians for three. Nice box out by Nelson for the board against McCowan. Perry, you talked about the gang rebounding yesterday. The, the Notre Dame player is telling us how important it is to finish the defensive possession, that they play really strong defense the first time around. Unable to do it on this sequence. One of the things Blair Schaefer talked about was she's looking for windows, open windows where she can get her shot off. She's smaller. She doesn't have a ton of quickness. She needs time, and that offensive rebound provided it. She's a big-time shooter, and she knocked it down. She said early in her career, Vic Schaefer would tell her, you missed your window tonight. You missed your windows. She doesn't miss a lot of those windows anymore. One of the best three-point shooters in Mississippi State history, Blair Schaefer. The daughter of head coach Vic Schaefer playing her 135th and final Mississippi State game tonight. Young in the post up. Good help by McCowan. Vivian's clears. Cowan. Good denial by Nelson. She was last to touch. Shepard unable to rescue it. I am impressed with the job Christina Nelson has done since yeah. she's entered into the game one on one. They haven't had to bring extra help. They're bringing her extra help on the glass. Her job is keep McCowan off of it, but she's making her make tough shots over her outstretched arms. That's exactly the way you have to play it. They go smaller with Agumba Wale checking in for Shepard. Victoria Vivians has eight for Mississippi State. Notre Dame has not scored in the second quarter. Gumbawale was being ridden by Johnson. She'll pick up her second foul. How about this Bulldog defense? Notre Dame had 14 points at the start of the second quarter. We're almost halfway through. Incredible. And none of the pressure release action they're trying to run has worked. They tried to go back door. It hasn't been there. Well, Gumbawale left it short. And she just yelled on her way back up the floor, frustrated. Cowan gets it to go. 
Kara, you talked about it. Nelson has done a really nice job of making McCowan go over her. But McCowan is capable of making that shot and seemed to have a little bit better pace to her post game on that last shot. You guys talked about it. It's got to be a quick catch and turn for McCowan for her to be at her most efficient. Mabry blocked by McCowan. I was their same age because I was so much bigger. She said, I was so embarrassed. I would walk home from school and get off the bus, and I would go to my house. My brothers would go outside and play, and I would just stand at the window and watch them. I didn't want to go outside and have people stare at me. But she said that basketball has played a role in her life, and it's allowing her to be on a big stage with everyone looking, and she feels right at home. I mean, when you are an extraordinarily tall young girl, or if you're the mother of an extraordinarily tall young girl, all you want is for them to feel comfortable in their skin and to feel confident in who they are. And basketball is one place where being that tall is an advantage. And Tierra McCowan said it helped accelerate the process for her to feel comfortable in who she was. Kara, she didn't really know how to play basketball when she started in seventh grade. She had to teach herself, train herself, and she may have made the biggest jump over the last two years of any player in the country. I agree. I think she's the most improved player in the country since she stepped foot on campus. But I also believe, Adam, that she has the largest untapped reservoir of talent inside of her to improve even more. The, the ceiling for this young woman is limitless. She's just scratching the surface now, and it's been fun to see her blossom in this Final Four. The next rebound for McCowan, that will put her at 100 rebounds for the NCAA tournament. Wow. She's already got the record. The old record was 75. <laughs> We're talking about Janelle McCarville, who is a really good player for Minnesota and played in the WNBA. McCowan's going to have 100 rebounds in the NCAA tournament. Vivians with another steal. Unable to finish there. Mabry ripped it away. The Irish still haven't scored in the second quarter. They need a bucket now. Shepard draws the contact. Much needed for Notre Dame. Jeff, Jess Shepard spinning around McCowan, but then leaning in at the last minute to draw the foul. She has great feet for a big right there. Sees that McCowan is there. Smart play to draw the foul on the big. Well, at some point, somebody's got to take offense to this and make a play. And that's what Jess Shepard did. You cannot fight pressure with passivity. You can't do it. You have to attack it. That's the way Notre Dame has to play if they want to score in this game. That is a law of basketball physics. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Jess Shepard was not even sure that she was going to get to play for Notre Dame this year. A transfer from Nebraska was granted eligibility hours before their first exhibition game this year. Ogumbawale knocked it free. But Vivians recovers to finish. Ogumbawale. There is rebound number 100 of the tournament for Tierra McCowan. Vivians. When Nelson tried to draw the charge again, that'll be her second foul. Well, coming up at the half, it's the Northwestern Mutual Halftime Report. We'll get a great look at what happens in this first half. We'll discuss the confidence of Tierra McCowan. And of course, our favorite part is the fact we get to toss to Maria Taylor, Andy Landers, and Nell Fortner. We'll see you guys in two minutes and 19 seconds of game time. And I understand why Jackie Young's on the bench. It's because she has two fouls. But Notre Dame cannot win this game unless their three guards are on the floor. The spacing is too poor. There's not enough ball handling on the floor. There's not enough players that can make individual plays against this stifling defense. That is what the Irish are going to have to have on the court in the second half.
Odumbawale. A cold start for Arike Odumbawale. And then contact for the foul at midcourt. One for ten from the field. Largest lead right now at 11 for Mississippi State. Mabry knocked it away from Dan Barry. And they get something going off the defense. Traveling violation on Mabry as Schaefer got back in transition. We know that Blair Schaefer is terrific at drawing charges, but how about that? She knew she couldn't get the charge, so she did the flyby but forced the travel. Great defense by Blair Schaefer. Notre Dame down double digits, a position that they have been in often this year, but have come back for big wins. They've done it six times. They did it in impressive fashion against an SEC team back in January. At home, they were down 23. They came back to win it. Well, right now, Notre Dame struggling shooting the basketball 30% from the field. Vivians. Easy look. Great overload by Mississippi State. That's what you want to do in a zone is put the defense in a vulnerable position. You overload the number of players you have on that side of the floor. Someone's going to get an open shot. <laughs> Halftime could not be coming at a better time for Notre Dame yeah. to get back in the locker room and regroup. I mean, look at that stat line for Marina Mabry. Seven turnovers in the first half for the Irish point guard. Notre Dame team that scored 91. Granted, it was in overtime, but 91 against Connecticut two days ago. Johnson for three. This will count if it goes. Notre Dame, a season low for points in a quarter. They mustered just three. It's only the third time all year that this electric offense has been held to single digits in a quarter. Tierra McCowan has been breaking records all tournament. She's with Holly Rowe. Well, Tierra, your team started out turning the ball over, struggling a little bit. What was the turning point that now you forced 12 turnovers and put on the defensive pressure? Um, I think that's what we've been emphasizing all year, is turning the other team over and trying to limit our turnovers. So we just went out there the first half, you know, we weren't really dialed in. But after coach, you know, gave us a little pep top and said, we got to calm down. And so that's what we did. And now we're in it. It's a very different physical matchup for you inside tonight. Jess Shepard's got good footwork. She pulls you outside. What does that feel like in that moment for you? Um, I know my strengths and I know that my teammates are going to have my back. If I get taken off the bounce and they're going to help and seal down. Thank you so much. You're welcome turning the basketball over. They had way too many turnovers in that first half that resulted in 12 points for Mississippi State, and they have to finish the play on the defensive glass. Mississippi State with 12 second chance points. I think a function of Notre Dame's struggles was Jackie Young being on the bench. Remember, this is a young woman that had 32 points, a career high in their win over UConn in the semifinal. She's back in the game, having another perimeter score, someone else that can attack. That should help Notre Dame offensively. There's Shepard. She led the way for the Irish in the first half. She's got nine. We mentioned the double-digit comebacks that Notre Dame has had this year, including the school record 23-point comeback at home against Tennessee. Part of the reason that Notre Dame's been a really good second half team has been their defensive adjustments over the course of this year. And their defensive adjustments that Coach McGraw can make if her players are not in foul trouble. She cannot 
go completely at it in the first half because she can't risk her players getting into foul trouble. Mabry draws the contact from Schaefer. Good start to the second half. You said it. You couldn't have had a better start in the first 50 seconds of this game if you're Notre Dame. A nice, calm possession against Mississippi State defensively. And there's Marina Mabry in the passing lane, getting the steal and taking it aggressively. Let's see if this gives Notre Dame some energy and some life. Moments ago, Holly Rose spoke with Marina Mabry. Marina Mabry of Notre Dame, they really turned up the defensive pressure. What do you guys have to do to be more effective and move the ball how you want to? Um, I need to stop turning the ball over. Uh, I'm taking possession away from our team, so uh, that's number one. And number two, I think we just need to um, hold our ground and get open better and execute what we want to execute um, instead of worried about who's in front of us. I remember back to the Tennessee game. You were down big. You guys have said that was the turning point in your season. Why does this team know how to fight, and what will we see in that fight in the second half? Yeah, uh, we just need to play Notre Dame basketball. We only played Notre Dame basketball for about four minutes in the first half, so uh, 20 minutes in Notre Dame basketball, we'll be able to come out on top. Thank you, Marina. Mabry had a season-high tying seven turnovers in the first half. That matches the amount of turnover she had against Louisville back in early January. That was the first game where she really ran point guard for Notre Dame. Ogumbawale hits. We've talked about the success that Notre Dame has had in the second half defensively throughout the course of the season when they can change things up and be more aggressive. You see the difference, about nine point difference between first and second half for their opponents. William has three fouls, but still on the floor. Vic Schaefer left her out there, and she gets the two. Well, again, it's an attack of Jackie Young on the perimeter, and it, again, Jackie Young has to let Morgan William go. Shepard called for the traveling violation. Mississippi State ball. Let's take you inside the locker room for the dogs and Vic Schaefer's speech. Have to play athletic. Y'all hear me? You have to keep doing that and then just get every rebound. Get every rebound. Contest every shot. Get every rebound. You've got 20 minutes now. You can't change. I don't want you to change a thing. Defense, you just keep wearing them down, pick them up full court, and grind it. It's got to be physical, y'all. You've got to go out there and you've got to make it happen. They are not going to give it to you. They're going to try to come. They punch you early, you answer. Don't you let them punk you this half. Let's go. I like the message. I mean, they played the way they need to play to win this game in the first half. They controlled tempo. They were the more physical team. There is not much that Mississippi State needs to change. Don't let them punk you this half. Schaefer hits her second three. Ogumba Wale draws the foul. That'll go against Victoria Vivians. Before that drive for Ogumba Wale, previous two pos possessions, we saw her go in and miss layups. Yeah. This is a young lady who does not think about the last shot. She stays fearless in her attack and her scoring mentality, that Mamba mentality. <laughs> Orike Ogumbawale has been prone all year to slow starts, especially against good defensive teams, understandably so. But her second halves over the course of the season have been very, very productive. If Notre Dame wants to be in this game, it feels like she's going to have to have a productive second half. Vivians. 17 for the senior. Largest lead is 15 for the dogs. Westbell. Notre Dame really wanted elbow entry on that possession, and Mississippi State wasn't giving it up. The Vivian's a little bit of a heat check shot there. A deep three. 
What a pass by Ogumba Wale to West Bell. It sure was. And if you're Notre Dame, try to settle as much as you can. There is plenty of time left. McCowan. Shepard will pick up the foul. One foot already in the restricted area. That's how deep Tierra McCowan was when she caught the basketball. There's nothing you can do with 6'7 when she catches it that close. Chloe Bibby, the freshman from Australia, will check in for Victoria Vivians. McCowan missed both. Shepard. Made some contact with Jackie Young, her teammate there. The foul is called against Mississippi State. Jackie Young has been a magnet for contact this season. Actually broke her nose in a practice in mid-December. Had to wear one of those protective masks for a while. He was not a fan of that mask. Was able to get cleared to play without the mask in late February. Much happier, she told us, playing without the mask. McCowan just picked up her second foul for Mississippi State. Bibby off the bench. Dumbawale aggressive gets that one to fall. Notre Dame's best stuff offensively is when there's been flow into it, when they've been able to run into it. Maybe not a transition opportunity with numbers, but when they've been able to go into their offense with a little bit of pace. Bibby. Bibby was on the ground to save it. McCowan. Fouled. Shepard will pick up her third. McCowan to the line on the other side of this break. Happened before the foul. Not only does Mississippi State get two free throws here, but you referenced it. It puts Jess Shepard at on the bench. And guys, in that last time out, Mississippi State coach Vic Schaefer said to his team, they are fouling Tierra McCown every single time. If she could just make her free throws, we will win this game. She kind of had this look on her face like, gosh, coach, I'm sorry. She's now one for four. But he patted her on the leg. He said, I know you can do it. And she has improved in the NCAA tournament. 63% in the regular season, but 76 from the line in the postseason. So a lot on her shoulders right now. McCowan does have a double-double tonight for SEC record extending 29th of the year. And there is rebound number 12. For Nelson and Westbell keeping an eye on McCowan on the back end of that zone. Vivian's got met at the summit by Westbeld. It will stay with Mississippi State with four to shoot. Excellent job by Westbeld to crack back there on the weak side and get her hand all ball. It's a good call. Schaefer to beat the clock. Shot clock violation. Cowan and Nelson were banging away down low. 
That's not the window that Blair Schaefer was looking for. <laughs> Tough when it's that late in the clock. Here's that elbow entry you guys were talking about. A whistle and a foul here against Mississippi State and Vic Schaefer out near the edge of the coach's box talking with Joe Vazilli about it. Jackie Young was trying to post up Blair Schaefer and she was very, very physical, Kara. I thought the foul could have gone on Jackie Young, but Blair Schaefer was holding her ground. That's the third on Blair Schaefer. Our friends Mike Greenberg, Michelle Beadle, and Jalen Rose getting set for tomorrow morning. Get up at 7 a.m. Eastern time on ESPN and the ESPN app. I'm glad it goes till 10 because I'm not sure I'll be getting <laughs> up at 7 tomorrow. <laughs> what a weekend it's been here in Columbus. McCowan tipped by Nelson but punched by Vivians. Johnson offensive foul. The second charge drawn by Christina Nelson. How about Christina Nelson? The third attempt, the third time's the charm. The first two were called blocks. This one, she's there outside the restricted area. Finally gets the charge. Westbelt a little out of control. Mabry. Knocked away by Young. Young. Boy, they had a second crack at it. Ooh, nearly taken away by Mabry. Vivians in the short corner. Approaching two minutes to play in the third. Two of the best offensive teams in the country. But tonight the defenses have stepped up. Offensive rebound by Westbeld, and she draws a third Tierra McCowan foul. Zion Campbell, the other big for Mississippi State, coming to the scorer's table. How about that tough rebound by Westbeld to get in there? Westbeld, Westbeld has also done a really nice job the last few times on the floor defensively with her help. She's been a real presence. So now McCowan comes off the floor for the first time in Columbus this weekend. She has played all but four minutes in the NCAA tournament. Down to a six-point game. Schaefer can't connect. Ogumbawale. Tierra McCowan is out of the game. And the C's part, and there's no one standing between you and the other side. There is an infusion of confidence now for Notre Dame on the offensive end without that presence on the back line, and Agumbawale takes advantage. McCowan on the bench, Schaefer with four fouls to the bench. 
And a foul called on the Irish against Westbelt. Her third. Notre Dame scored 17 points in the first half. Their fewest of any half this year. They've got 21 here in the third. Danbury left it short. A three would tie the game. Ogumbawale inside. And a foul. Arike Ogumbawale has been relentless in the second half with her attack to the paint. And getting inside, yet you see on the lower part of her body that Vivian's knocks her off balance. That's a foul. You can see Notre Dame's hockey team in action against Michigan in the Frozen Four semifinals from St. Paul on Thursday at 9.30 Eastern on ESPN2 and the ESPN app. Visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. Two-point game. A reach-in foul called. That'll go against Marina Mabry. Vic Schaefer has to figure some things out with his rotations right now. That's his starting lineup out there, all in some foul trouble. They've proven they can play without each one of those starters. Remember, Victoria Vivian's in the semifinal win over Louisville for a long stretch of time in the second That's half right. on the bench with four fouls. The one player they cannot play without is Tierra McCowan, who's on the bench right now. Notre Dame understanding the foul trouble and attacking the basket. Young to tie it. Shepard. They won't get a shot off. Their offense was not a passing offense, and that's where turnovers can come. It was a dribble drive, take you one-on-one -on -one offense. Shepard in the post against Vivians. And Notre Dame has its first lead since the first quarter. Cowan posting. Draws a foul on Nelson. This is going to be a storyline down the stretch, you would think. Will Tierra McCowan, as she has more often in the postseason, be able to step up? You see two Notre Dame players close to Rashonda Johnson. One of them that has to be a drop. That has to be a drop closer, almost into McCowan's lap to deter that post pass. And that's something they worked on in practice yesterday. Sitting in her lap, and they did not do it on that possession. That time, she coolly sinks two free throws to tie it. This is Vic Schaefer's best defensive group out on the floor. He talked to us about how he would have Rashonda Johnson and Jordan Danbury in the game to try and handle those Notre Dame guards that are physical, that have the ability to take you off the dribble. Those are two of his best one-on-one -on -one defenders. And with McCowan in the game, some help on the back end. Notre Dame's best offense has been get it to a Agumbawale and give her a little room to drive. Gumbawale posting here. She'll take it and give Notre Dame the lead. 
I think that's just called a boom bawale, that offensive set. That's a pro <laughs> move right there, yeah, what she is. did, that little step back, that was nice. Vivian's in the traffic, got it to go. An eight minute field goal drought ends for Mississippi State. Mabry was juggling and recovered to get it to Nelson. Vivians. So now Christina Nelson has picked up four fouls. She's the first Irish player to hit four tonight. She's going to come out at Westbelt, who's got three on her. We'll check back in. You feel that? The pace has picked up a little bit. The yeah. urgency has picked up a little yep. bit on both sides. Played in a wide window. A 21 point swing in the national championship. McCowan snares the rebound. 12 points, 14 boards. Deep catch, and McCowan puts Mississippi State in front. Help has to come on that. Absolutely has to come from one of the guards. You gotta get it across here if you're Notre Dame. Just beat the 10 second clock. Another rebound for McCowan. Vivians. McCowan. I don't know what to tell Notre Dame's players here. It's just somebody that's bigger and stronger and better. And she's done this for six games in the tournament. She's been the best player in the country for the last three weeks. And there hasn't been anybody that can stop her from taking over a game. And now Westbeld has four fouls for Notre Dame. So two of their front court players in danger of fouling out. Shepard, got her own miss. Jessica Shepard's one of the few players, though, who doesn't care offensively who's around her. It doesn't matter if one of those players near her is 6-7. She has been looking to attack and done a nice job on the finish inside. Comes the double. Jackie Young came from the backside. You've got to bring it. Biggs feel the extra feet around theirs. Young was denied. Danbury lost it. Ogumbawale with Mabry. Against Holmes. She draws a Holmes foul.
They call her the closer. Seven times this year, she has come up with double-digit points in the fourth quarter. She had 15 between the fourth quarter and overtime against Connecticut on Friday. And Adam, I, you know, I just wonder, just to, everyone knows, but the four ACLs, the depleted roster, just seven scholarship players. These players have been asked to play a lot of minutes. Most of them got to bed about 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning after that Friday game. Will they be fatigued down the stretch? They've given so much all season. They've been resilient. Do they have it left in them? Oh, look at this substitution by Vic Schaefer. Puts Blair Schaefer back in the game. Needs some more spacing to create some room for Big T or an open three. McCowan with the putback. Eight points in the fourth quarter for Tierra McCowan. Uh, just the insertion of another shooter into the lineup. Yeah. Just breathe some air and breathe some spacing into their half-court offense. You just have to go out and respect that shooter. There's a 10-second call. Arika Gumbawale played with it a couple possessions ago. Yep. We talked about it. That pressure causes you to get not necessarily confused, but get your mind on something else other than time and score. And Mississippi State steals a possession because of it. You called it out, what, two possessions ago? It was she close. just barely beat the 10-second clock. Burned that time. The post to McCowan. Excellent defense. Nelson able to deny and get the jump ball. Victoria's dad, John, has been her biggest fan. He once drove 19 hours in his truck to get there to watch her play. I bet he's driven over hundreds of hours to watch his daughter. She says it's because he's too scared to get on a plane, but great commitment from her dad. Great stuff, Holly. Shot clock violation here, Notre Dame ball. Vivians is one of four seniors on this roster. These are the three that came in together. Blair Schaefer, Vivians, and Morgan Williams who have accounted for a school record 126 victories for Mississippi State. Ogumbawale. Out to Mabry. And a foul called against Notre Dame. It'll go against Jackie Young, her third. Oof, a lot of contact there. Uh, a little Maybe. contact, a lot of reaction. There you go. <laughs> Fair point. <laughs> I think that describes me pretty accurately as well. <laughs> little contact, a lot of reaction. <laughs> McCowan. Loose to Ugumbawale. Against Vivians. Too strong. And she punches the stanchion in frustration. She's missed a ton of layups tonight. Yep. A ton of them. Shot clock late. Holmes draws a foul with one on the clock on Enrique Ogumbawale. More frustration for the junior from Milwaukee. Yep, the right hand on the hip. That's a foul. It doesn't matter how hard the push is, if you take away the shooter's balance, that's a foul. This last defensive possession for Notre Dame, I thought they looked tired. And one indicator of that, especially when teams are in a zone, is where are their hands? And for most of that possession, the hands were not up. The hands were down. Understandable if they're feeling some fatigue at this point after being in the overtime game with a limited bench in the semifinals against UConn. Young, Shepard, Ogumbawale, Nelson, Mabry. The five out there for the Irish. Shepard got loose. Boy, she has been huge for Notre Dame tonight with 10 in the second half. That was a heck of a job by Jackie Young to remain patient until that pass emerged.
Pressure on Schaefer. Shot clock to three. Johnson. Rebounded by Mabry. Traveling violation on Marina Mabry. Carey, you talked about the pass from Jackie Young inside, but there was also by Shepard a terrific seal. Watch her calling for the ball with her left hand as she moves McCowan up the lane line. The help is not there. Just a perfect job of post positioning by Shepard. 2.20 to go in the national championship game. Notre Dame looking for its second title and its first in 17 years. Mississippi State looking for its first team championship in any sport. Holmes lost it. Four to shoot. Johnson for three. Got it! Schaefer and Johnson, two of the top three three-point shooters in Mississippi State history. Here's Johnson to tie the game. 5.7 remaining. Heinz Allen all the way down the floor. The tip, no good. Off to overtime. Just call her Big Shot Row. When Mississippi State has needed a bucket here in Columbus, Rashonda Johnson has delivered, bringing everyone to their feet in the hump down in Starkville. That was her first field goal of the game tonight, knocking down the three to give Mississippi State some separation. There's been times tonight she has looked hesitant to, to take the shot. She had no choice there. Although I think we have a big shot row on our broadcast. <laughs> that might already be taken. A minute 40 remaining. Shepard to Mabry for three. What a response. That was the first three-pointer for Notre Dame tonight. But Cowan battling for the miss, and a foul is called. Taking a moment to settle herself down before she gets back up. surrounded by three Notre Dame players. Kara, you talked about it in the first half, the team gang rebounding that Notre Dame has to do on the defensive end. Four fouls on McCowan now. It's Johnson watching Ogumbawale. Foul is whistled. Beg your pardon. Kickball called. So the shot clock will reset to 15. Mabry and William with contact as Mabry was going for the ball. Young bakes it in to tie the game. Missed by Mississippi State, you must secure the defensive rebound. Notre Dame has trailed by double digits in both games at the Final Four. No team has ever won a title by coming back from down double digits twice. McCowan missed it. Shot clock is off. Tie game at 58 apiece. Title hangs in the balance. Tipped away by William. Loose in midcourt. Young's got it. Ogumbawale. A whistle. 
A foul is called with three seconds remaining. Wild sequence. Notre Dame had a wide open layup. If that foul is not called. A lot of contact between Mabry and William. And then McCowan gets called for the foul there, her fifth. What a smart play. Yes. An incredibly smart play. The game is over almost if she doesn't foul. And on top of that, she's a post player who's not ever in that position to have to do that. And she sacrifices herself for that. I for mean, the game. For the game. What a play. No foul there with some contact from Mabry. And then a foul on McCowan is her fifth. We talked about Vic Schaefer wanting to get the ball into McCowan's hands. He does. She gets a great shot. And Kara, what did Notre Dame do? Just what you said. They boxed out and got the defensive board. The foul on McCowan was just the third on Mississippi State. So it would not put Notre Dame at the free throw line for shots. But Notre Dame ball, two timeouts. Keep that in mind as well as they inbound the basketball if they don't like the look. In the semis, it was Enrique Ogumbawale doing it in overtime to beat UConn. Who's going to be the hero tonight? Two timeouts and still one foul to give for Mississippi State. Young to inbound, Westbeld, Shepard, Mabry, and Ogumbawale, and Vic Schaefer, after he gets a look, will take one of his two remaining timeouts. So I like that from Vic Schaefer just to get a look at the strategy. Here's where I'm going if I'm Muffet McGraw. Remember, there's three seconds left. You referenced the foul to give Adam. So that means if it's a catch on the perimeter, I allow Mississippi State to take that foul. I'm going into the paint for Jess Shepard because who just fouled out of the game? Tierra McCowan. Tierra McCowan. I get my post a look on the block. If a foul occurs there, I can go into my motion and get to the free throw line. That's where I'm going if I'm Notre Dame. And this morning, what did Muffet McGraw do in her shoot around? She worked on this exact late game situation and carry out of this play. They have an option to go directly into Jessica Shepard. McCowan has to watch from the bench. Three seconds for a national championship or overtime. Ogumbawale for the win. Good! Arike Ogumbawale wins the national championship for Notre Dame. Enrique does it again, and the Irish do it again for the first time in 17 years. Brenda Pantoa is trying to get everybody back to their spots. It 
It could be time on the clock here. But the players are already headed back towards the locker room. There is point one remaining. But Notre Dame is going to walk out of Columbus with a national title. Several players for Mississippi State had already walked back towards the locker room. Mississippi State played this as good as you can. They took away the post pass for, for Jess Shepard with Blair Schaefer backing off the inbounder. And Enrique Agumbawale made a tough challenge shot. They have to come back and inbound the basketball. The clock stops when the ball goes through the rim, and there was still .1 on the clock. And it can only be a tip, and you don't have Tierra McCowan in the game. She would be the one you'd throw the lob up to. But you need a three anyways. Yep. So, I mean, you'd have to volleyball punch it from outside of yeah, the perimeter yeah. and just hope for an absolute miracle at this point. Guys. Columbus has been incredible. Ooh. I mean, what, think about it. When are we coming back? Just out of curiosity. <laughs> the first time in the history of the women's tournament that both semifinals go to overtime. And then this, a three with 0.1 seconds left on the clock to win a national championship for Notre Dame. They had the foul to give. They did not give it on that final possession. And Ogumbawale, who had the dagger against UConn, has the shot of a lifetime in the championship. This has to be brutal for Mississippi State, having to not only suffer the loss, but come back out to inbound the basketball. Your heart breaks for him. It's also brutal the way the game ended. Remember, they had a five-point lead. They had a five-point lead and in control up 58 to 53. And Notre Dame has come storming back here at the end. And Vic Schaefer has the clipboard in hand. Well, guys, Vic Schaefer is making the point to the officials right now that they don't even have their whole team on the court. Victoria Vivian, Tierra McCown, they're all running back onto the court right now. They thought the game was over, so so many had left the floor. He was trying to implore the officials, we have to get our entire team back out here on the floor, and we need our time that we should be given. That's a mistake. The official scorers have to tell Vic Schaefer which players are in the game. They all have to reset themselves on the floor and inbound the ball. Well, the only thing you can do is try to draw, draw a charge or draw a foul before the ball comes in. Seventeen years to the day, the Notre Dame Fighting Irish win their second national championship. Let's go over to Holly Rowe. For the second straight game, you do the impossible to many, but you don't think it's impossible. Why? I mean, I work for this in practice. I practice late game all the time. Me and Marina are always in the gym, counting down. So I don't know, it just felt right. Your coach, there were three seconds left. What was that timeout like? And what was she asking you to do as you took the floor with those seconds ticking away? I mean, we wanted to try to get a matchup in the ball with Jess, but they were really covering her. They knew we were trying to throw it in. So I just ran to Jackie. I was like, throw it to me, throw it to me. Kobe said that you hadn't completed the job yet. What do you have to say to Kobe now? It's over. The job is over. You Mama mentality. You have to go right here. Shout out Kobe. That's two in a row. Shout out Kobe. <laughs> you guys had so much adversity. What do you think at the end of the day is inside of your team that allowed you to be here for this moment? Coach McGraw recruits players like this. Actually, I have a shout out. If anybody is thinking what's going to go through, go to Notre Dame. This is what we do. National champs right here. Thank you, Enrique. Thank you.